Yo, what's up guys? This is Midnight Wabbit. Welcome back to another video here on Destiny. I'm not actually on Destiny. Um, I'm on the same website I was on my my video yesterday. I talked about the new raid gear items, the armor and the uh, weapons, the new raid weapons and stuff for the House of Wolves DLC that's coming up in a little over a month or so. And today what I'm going to talk to you guys about is the new exotic items and the weapons and the armor. I'm going to go through all the weapons and the armor. You can see right here is this list. This is all of the new confirmed exotics. Um, there's only two exotic weapons right now, as you can see, but I'm assuming they're probably going to have a PlayStation exclusive one as well. Because I remember, in the, the, if you remember the Dark Below, they had the uh, No Land Beyond, Dark, the Dragon's Breath, and then the other, the, they had a PlayStation exclusive called the Fourth Horseman, which was a shotgun. So I'm assuming that they may be adding a uh, PlayStation exclusive one as well. I'm not sure if they're adding the Fate of All Fools, which is that uh, exotic scout rifle bounty that... Um, I'm not sure if they're actually adding that in now or later on, but anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get into this. I'm going to talk about the weapons first, and then we're going to go into the armor, and I'll, I'll talk about all of that with you guys. The 347 Vesta Dynasty is a scout rifle. It's an exotic scout rifle. And now my internet's not working. There we go. Okay. And you can see it's got pretty cool uh, blue and gold color combination there. Uh, the attack values are not known on any of these, so unfortunately, stupid ads. I kill myself, I swear to God. Anyway, um, the unique ability, it's right here, it's called David and Goliath, and if you guys remember the story, then, well, I'm not going to go into the story right now, but I mean, you guys, most of you guys probably know what that is, if not, you can look it up. Um, David, precision kills temporarily increase the agility stat for 15 seconds, and Goliath, non-precision kills temporarily increase your armor stat for 15 seconds. Now, basically, it's kind of tricky because it's a scout rifle, so you want to aim for precision kills, but you want to aim for precision shots, like, automatically. But the armor stat thing seems like it'd be a little, little bit more helpful than the agility, I, I would think. It seems like the armor stat thing would be really, really cool to have uh, for like 15 seconds or so. But you have to make sure that you like, if you're getting critical hits on them, you have to make sure not to kill them with a critical hit. You like get like one or two critical hits and then switch to a body shot to kill them. Otherwise, it will not count. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I don't know if they did that on purpose or anything. It's kind of interesting. Um, single point sling. You got hammer forge for improved range. Although it's a scout rifle, so I don't really know why you'd need that. I guess the accuracy, though or a perfect balance for the low recoil. And then you got life support. Uh, recovering from any near-death grants additional ammo and briefly increases reload speed. And I, you can't really tell from this like what kind of scope it has on it, but it's an exotic, so you, you don't need to choose the scope. It just comes with a certain scope, but you can pick this kind of stuff right there. Now, this I'm actually really excited for is the new shotgun coming called the Lord of Wolves. And this is really, it's really, really cool. You can see it looks pretty cool. It looks like, I don't even know. It, look, it looks like, almost like Honestly, I have no idea. It looks like a wonder weapon from zombies, almost. Uh, it's got a pretty low range, and there's nothing to increase the range, which does kind of suck. But uh, anyway, it does solar damage, and what makes this gun cool, and I'll show you guys that, is the special upgrade, which I'll get to in a second. It, it does cause solar damage uh, by itself, and you can see definitely want uh, probably probably want this one to increase the range because you don't want you don't definitely don't want a penalty to range with something this uh, with something with that little range. Got the hip fire uh, increase right there. Obviously, damage upgrades. You have lightweight. You can do flared magwell. I probably would go with because it has a five round magazine, and uh, you don't really need low recoil if you're up close with a shotgun. You don't really have to worry about that. So I'd probably go with flared magwell. That's just me. Got your damage upgrades now. The very the cool one here is is called Devil's Touch, and stacking rapid hits with this gun has a chance to set your target on fire, which means like. You, if you hit a target with like two, two or three or more consecutive shots from the magazine, you have a chance to set the target on fire and do damage over time. As well as it already does solar damage on its own, but like if you hit a target, like I, I'm assuming each time you hit a target, like in a row, the more shots you land increases the chance of setting the target on fire. So probably if you do the whole magazine, it's probably almost guaranteed to set the target on fire. If it's like a, a wizard major or something like that that has a solar shield, that'd probably be pretty helpful. Or in Crucible, actually, probably be pretty good. If you can get, like, two shots on someone, but they're too far away for you to kill them, but it actually lights them on fire and it finishes them off, probably be pretty helpful for that as well. Um, seems like it seems like would be pretty... It seems like it'd be, it's going to be a pretty good gun, I think. Uh, most of like I said, I really, I really am excited for this, the Devil's Touch thing. I think that's going to be very, very cool. But anyway, let's move into the armor here in a second. I'm just going to go ahead and go through all of the armor with you guys real quick. I'm not going to spend too much time on each one, but uh, there's... You can see there's three for each class. There's the you got Titan stuff, and why is there an ad there? I swear to God, it's got Titan stuff, Hunter stuff, and the Warlock stuff. Um, so we're gonna start with the Titan stuff. It's at the top here, and as you can see, the light level and the uh, is not is 
inaccurate and the armor stats are inaccurate. Like I said, just like on the raid armor we had yesterday, but the actual special abilities are accurate. So I'm gonna show you guys that. You can see provides unstoppable for Fist of Havoc, which um, is the one where I just think it makes it harder for you to, use, to you to get killed while you're using it. So you can use unstoppable. You can also use shoulder charge at the same time on your uh, in your skill tree or whatever you want to call it. Which is, which I guess is a good thing. It's definitely pretty helpful. There's another one that increase that you gives you a uh, what's it called? Death from above and uh, the other one. I don't remember what it's called for a fist of havoc. It's death from above and something and like unstoppable. I think. Yeah. I oh, know this is unstoppable. What was the other one? Then? I don't remember. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> um, the, this one looks like a pretty good one for the Titan, actually. Taking damage from a melee attack deals damage in an area around you. So it's like it's like explosive uh, electric feedback that it gives to the, that it deals to the enemy, which might be pretty helpful in Crucible, actually, if you're running around as a Titan, using like the Striker Titan, just running around with like, let's say you're using that uh, that Lord of Wolves shotgun running around the map as a Titan, you got this on, uh, as well as like some other, some legendary armor as well. When enemy comes up to you, melees you, but doesn't quite kill you, they just get that first melee on you, and the explosive feedback knocks them backwards, deals damage to them, and you can turn to them, either shoot them once with your shotgun and kill them, or uh, melee them and hopefully kill them. I'm not sure how much, exactly how much damage that explosive feedback will do, but I got a feeling it's going to have to be nerfed in PvP, because it's probably going to do way too much damage, I think, at first. That's just my opinion. I think that's going to be very, very fun to use. I am definitely want to try that out. I want to try to get try to get that, uh, definitely. I'm excited for that. Uh, Peregrine Greaves... Um, the shoulder charge deals bonus damage when activated in the air. So if you're in air and you jump, like you jump up in the air while shoulder charge is active and you use shoulder charge, it deals bonus damage. I'm not sure exactly how much bonus damage it does, but I'm sure we can do some tests and stuff once it actually comes out. I can, I, I can, I can actually test it. I'll, I'm gonna, definitely going to test it to see like the exact value, like how much more damage it actually does because I'm curious of that. We're going to move on to the hunter stuff here. The hunter helmet, kind of an interesting thing. It significantly increases your weapon's accuracy for a short time after jumping. I don't know if that includes being in midair, because if it does, I mean, that might be kind of helpful if you're in midair, increases the accuracy, because it's kind of hard to have good accuracy while you're in midair. But if you actually have to land first, I don't know if I really see the value in that. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. It may, it may end up being very, very good. I don't know. It depends on how much the accuracy is increased. We'll see about that. This next one is my personal favorite of the new, uh, the uh, Hunter Gauntlet, Ikahika's Hooks. Uh, hitting an enemy with a melee attack while invisible deals additional damage over time. So yeah, you got uh, Touch of Venom, which is what it's called. And basically, so basically, if you're invisible and you hit an enemy with a melee attack while you're invisible, it poisons them and deals damage over time, just like the thorn. And it's pretty cool. Uh, I think like that would be pretty good in, uh, in Crucible as well, but even, but, I mean, even in PvE, they'd probably be pretty, pretty fun to use. Um, the leg armor, the boots, it upgrades your double jump with a third with a third jump, which uh, you wouldn't think would be very helpful when you first think about it because uh, you already have the triple jump on the gunslinger. But when you think about it, with this, you can use triple jump on your uh, blade dancer if you wanted to. And you can also, if you're doing it either on either or, you have the you have triple jump as well as the increased height. So you can go even higher, probably probably higher than the Titan can go, to be honest. You can probably go higher than the Titan, which will enable you to get to, play to certain places that you were not able to get to as a hunter before. Because if you have the increased height as well as the, tr the third jump, because the third jump really reduces the amount of height you can jump up as a hunter. So if you have that and you use that on your blade dancer, it'd be a lot easier to get across certain things you wouldn't be able to get across before. Like maybe the bridge in Crota's End might be a lot easier to get across uh, certain parts of that. So definitely, uh, definitely want to try that out as well. I think that's going to be very, very good. The Ram looks like it's going to be a pretty good one for the Warlock, the Helmet. Activating Radiance from Death disorients nearby enemies. So if you self-revive yourself, if you self-res, it will disorient any nearby enemies, just like the Titan's Flashbang Grenade. You know, they basically, they can't attack for a few seconds. They get all confused and kind of like blinded. So in, in a Crucible, that'd probably be very good as well. But also just like in PvE, because like the enemies like crowd around your ghost after they kill you, just like keep beating it up. So as soon as you spawn, they just like a lot of times if you re if you revive yourself, they just like beat you to death instantly. So if you stun them and it gives you a chance to get away before they can just beat you to death in your spawn point, which is actually very, very helpful. And I, I like that because it's, it's really, it's really frustrating when you self revive and you waste your super and they just beat you to death right as you spawn. <laughs> but the purifier robes, uh, enemies killed with ignite effects explode. Now this basically just means your grenade, if you light them on fire with a grenade, or your Scorch ability, you just light them on fire. Uh, if they get killed by that, they will explode. 
or even the Lord of Wolves shotgun, like I said I, w I wanted to, if they, they get killed by the Ignite from that, that is technically fire damage, they will explode from that as well. So if you shoot them like three, two or three times with the Lord of Wolves, they light on fire and they run around a corner into a bunch of teammates and they, and they die, they will explode and probably kill all the teammates around them. You may end up getting like a multi-kill from that. So that's pretty cool. That's, if you're using a... If you're, that's probably, I think, would be more helpful in Crucible, to be honest. Just uh, from what I'm saying, I feel like this would be more helpful. Well, that, that'd probably be helpful in both, but the manacles, anything, any enemies you kill with a void light abilities grant you a shield, which includes your energy drain and your grenade, and I'm assuming your super as well. I'm not sure if, it, I don't know if it works with void weapons, because it says abilities, but anyway, so basically do that, it just grants you a shield, uh, which gives you, you know, increased damage resistance, essentially, for a short time. So that's basically to be used with the void walker. These two are for the sun singer. All, all of them are pretty good. The Warlock ones, it seems like they're all pretty good. The Hunter ones, uh, except for the top one, like I said, are both really good. And the Titan ones in general are very, very good as well. So the, the exotic items uh, that they're adding in this DLC are definitely very, very cool, as well as the 347 Vested Dynasty and the Lord of Wolves, which is the one, like I said, I'm super excited for. So uh, anyway, hopefully you guys did enjoy this. That is all the exotic content that they have confirmed as of right now. If, there is, like, if there's any news on that, like I said, the PS4 exclusive weapon or whatever, I will upload a video as soon as I find out about that. So you guys will be the first to know right after I know. Okay, I promise you guys that. So you guys, as soon as I know, you guys will know. But anyway, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Subscribe for more Destiny news, tips, tricks, uh, content, stuff like that. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. Like I said, I will talk to you guys tomorrow with another video. Peace.